Here we are working on the TS440 again from Kenwood. Um, I noticed that when I open and close the display like this, that the I'll get the dots. Um, I can you know manipulate it till it shows no dots at all, but it needs to be found. So I wiggled every wire in this entire thing, and I couldn't really find a source for it. So what I did, so I pulled the circuit board out of the bottom. I forget what the damn board's called, an IF board. Anyway, it's got the um, it's got uh, VCO1 on it, and um, I'm not really going to worry about the goop yet. Um, the bottom of the board needs massive uh, solder reflow, and that's what we're doing here. So what I've done so far, let's see if we can get a little better lighting on here. <clears throat> What I've done so far is I've reflowed this whole section and the center section, the VCO number one is right here. It's right here. <clears throat> there's, yeah, there's the can for it. So, um, I can tell you the solder on this Kenwood TS440 is as crappy as a Chinese Cobra 29. It's absolutely awful. I, I can't believe it. I, I was hoping ham radios were better than CB radios, but I'm left disappointed. So, um, we've got bright shiny solder joints and we've got dull gray everywhere. They're grainy, they're cracked. Um, you can see back in one of my videos where I do nothing but soldering, at the at the beginning of the video I, I shoot um, some footage through the microscope itself onto the board and uh, you can see how bad it is. Um, so anyway I'm gonna start with this board see if it helps, how much it helps, etc. and then uh, work on you know each board as I can get it pulled out. Um, I took a picture because there's only a few cables and I want to get them in the right connectors again when I put it all back together. Um, the other board in the front of that is about 10 times worse. I took all these off. I know some guys don't. They're not that hard. Um, these are shields that go. I forget exactly where they go now. One. Ah. Anyway, there's three shields. I pulled them off. They, they don't. Only one or two points um, on each shield actually goes through the board. Uh, the rest are soldered to the top. <clears throat> the only thing hard, the only thing hard about getting these off is wherever there's um, two of these, um, two of these pins, you have to heat them at the same time to get them off the board. And that's not fun, so just a tip. But anyway, I took them off and I said, you know, from my experience and some rough counting, there's about 900 plus solder joints on this board. Oh, man. It's, I got about half of it done. This whole section, like I showed you, this whole section here, so that's, it, you know, ish, 50%, and I had to go watch TV, man. It's just really hard to sit here and, and deal with this, so it'll get done, I'm hoping, tomorrow, and uh, put it back in. We'll see how it, if it makes any improvements and how it operates. Um, that's about it. I'm using... Um, brand is this? Alpha Metals? Yeah, it's a pretty good brand. So it's 6337. It's 032 thickness. Um, WACP3 is the um, how strong the flux is. So um, I thought this was uh, I guess I'm wrong. I thought this was uh, no clean um, solder. I'll have to look at my stash. I have, this is 032. I have 015 and 060 so I have bigger than this and smaller than this but this seems to work good it, it fills in a solder joint these joints besides being crystalline and everything is there there's insufficient solder on the board so you have to add some you couldn't just flux it and reflow it um, there's some joints right around here um, that attach a uh, tuning can on the other side 
and they were hand flowed by the factory. But they had so much flux in them, they'd create huge voids, um, like an empty volcano. And I had to, you know, use some braid to pull them, to pull, to take, you know, to, to remove them completely. So anyway, um, we'll see what happens. I was going to do this without the aid of the microscope, but I found in one case I had uh, bridged two solder joints together that were not tied together on the board. So. <clears throat> I have to check my own work very carefully and um, I don't know we'll get it done and uh, see how it goes um, there's not a lot of cables to get it apart to you know to take it out and there's you know a handful of screws it's not so bad um, I vacuumed it it had a bunch of dust built up around the fan and all over the metal all over the sheet metal so I vacuumed it out um, the mother is going to be this board here. Look at all those cables. Oh my god. <clears throat> what I'm thinking of doing with this one is unscrewing it from the sheet metal and leaving all the cables on it. And then either lay the whole thing down or solder it in a vertical position like that. I don't know which. It depends. Maybe this board's just fine. <laughs> it's not. These display boards, if you look back in my videos, both of these, there's two of them sandwiched in there. I reflowed all the joints on all those, and that was hundreds and hundreds more. <clears throat> so it seems to be working pretty good. Um, but like I said, there's lots of reasons for the dots. It, I just remember back, I used to flex this, and I would get dots because the solder on these boards was, was horrendous. And that got fixed. And now you open and close it, and the solder... You know, something something is not attached well. I wiggled every cable I could find, and it didn't seem to really trigger the dots. So I said, you know what, it's time to do the dirty work. Um, the other thing I need to do is I was playing with the uh, auto-tuner today, and it was sounded like something was binding in there. So I'll have to yak that out and get it, uh, get it rolling. But first things first, do one board, put it back, see how things function. And, um, and I'll see if it helps. <clears throat> All right, well, that's about it for now. Time for bed. See you, bye.